So, hello. I am here today with Sarah Black Charm, who she herself was born into a family of 10 kids and your parents didn't really know how to cook, so you took it upon yourself. And today, Sarah has her own fully fledged kitchen where she offers a really special service with food and meal prepping. And so, hello, Sarah. Hi. Hi, and nutrition. Yeah. Um, so, Sarah, tell us a little bit about how, yeah, what is the service that you offer? So, um, together with our nutritionist, Judy, uh, we build food plans for people according to what they want, what they need, and we send them food on a regular basis, uh, a few times a week or once a week, a few meals a week. Uh, and then we follow up with them and see how they're feeling. We read their blood tests. We adapt all of their meals according to what they would love to eat and yeah. what they can eat. Yeah. And um, I love doing this. This is uh, like a dream come true. That's incredible. Me. Right, because food, food is a celebration. Food is something that you should celebrate and you should be happy eating. And... I mean, we live, we're here in Afra, and there are so many Anglo families, and I kind of feel like with Anglo families, it's super, there's such high awareness to, to different food sensitivities. Right. So I'm guessing that, like, is your main client, like, someone who has food sensitivities? The majority is, um, not all of them are from Afra. We have clients in Jerusalem, in Ranana, in Tel Aviv, um, but... The majority is people who have either a chronic disease or food sensitivities or allergies. Mm -hmm. uh, we have people coming from abroad who come for yeshiva or gap year or just a visit right. and have allergies mostly to sesame. And Israel is the country of sesame, um, so they're very limited. Uh, and in order to make their experience in Israel perfect, <laughs> the food comes in uh, very strongly. Yeah. And uh, we're happy to provide those services. That's incredible. I think that's like the, it's such a big chunk of our lives eating, you know. And as a new mom, for me at least, like whenever I eat, like I don't really put so much thought into what I'm going to eat, how much I'm going to eat. Yeah. And right before we came out here, I kind of like saw the kitchen happening in here. And I was so impressed to see like you have, first of all, it's a huge kitchen, like in my standards, it's a huge, <laughs> but like how many, you must have like five ovens in there. We have two ovens, mm -hmm. uh, very big ones. It's like uh, 10, 10 tray uh, wow. ovens. Mm -hmm. um, and we have about 11 refrigerators whoa um if not more um but we wow. have a dairy and meat uh kitchen mm -hmm. and we have just uh we were we did and are working uh with the regulations of the health ministry um so this was yeah. the requirement and uh wow uh, when i first started this it was three and a half years ago. It was during COVID. I was working from home and I said, I'll try it out. Um, so I hired uh, Judy. And the nutritionist. We, yes. And we started doing this and we just got very busy very quickly. Um, I've always been kosher. I had a, a tilda from my home kitchen. Mm -hmm. And then about a year later, um, the ministry of religion uh came up to me and the mashgiach and they said well it's time to eliminate all food businesses home-based kashrut um they were the only ones in the front who were doing that mm -hmm. um and then they just they had to stop it so it was time for me to make a decision either to separate my home kitchen into like my basement mm -hmm. uh, for the business to operate separately or um, go fully fledged yep uh, so I guess so, that, that's what you're doing now so yeah I went into the journey of my life wow uh, very expensive yeah but, you know it's very worth it 
um, we're starting to see results now. Wow, and, this is um, like what, four years into it? This is almost four years into it. We moved into this kitchen almost two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and then it just it took time. It yeah. took time, uh, but it's very legit and very kosher. <laughs> it looks very legit. Yeah, I guess so. You. I just came in and then I saw all these different like flavor. I smelled these different flavors and I saw these different delicious looking foods. And then you have the nutritionist Judy weighing them. Yeah. And then you have the chef walking around and it feels like such a like feeling of like product productivity and doing. It's like you take it really seriously. Yeah, uh, we incredible. do because it's well, first of all, I started my career by saying, you know, there's a stigma about kosher food. It's not good. It doesn't taste good. Yeah. And then I went and I got more involved with the healthy food. And there's the same stigma. Oh, you know, healthy food. It's not good. Mm. And there's no reason for that. Right. Um, there are people that are very, very limited in their diet. Uh, and we are all the kosher uh, keeping world yeah. are limited anyways. Uh, but there's absolutely no reason to not enjoy our food, uh, to rebuild our relationship with food, no matter what it is. Yeah. Uh, and it just nutrition has a very big impact on everything in our body, on every soul and uh, on every liveliness. Yeah. So I was just speaking with Lauren Allen, who is a nutritionist that specializes in women's fertility. Mm -hmm. And she was describing to me like her, her and her own journey. She was able to conceive naturally just through changing her diet around. Yep. So and it's really similar to what you're saying, how when you start working with a client, you get them to do blood tests. You, you like look into the different blood types and then you give them a whole diet. And I remember you were telling me that the way you set up, the way you start with a client for the first time is you have first a meeting with them right and you go through all their sen food sensitivities and what they like and what they don't like and then it's first you and Judy and then you kind of like come up with a menu yourself and you go back and forth like it seems like such a right. process such a hand-picked pr product in the end for right. each client yes yeah, so like most of my career uh, I've traveled the world as a kosher personal chef. So cool. I love uh, that, by the way. Yeah, I yeah. loved it too. And right. I still love it. You went to Bali once. Yes, I rode an elephant and I was like, <laughs> that's one that's of my climax, favorite, riding favorite an animals. Yeah. <laughs> yes. There you go. Elephants uh, are great. Yeah. Where were we? So you're um, telling me about how you started both going traveling and then you started, that's how you started out. Right. Well, when, when was the first time that you started doing this for other people? When was the first time? It was, wow. <laughs> Since I started baking in my parents' kitchen. <laughs> yeah. Um, and my brother just loved the way I made pasta for him. Hmm. He would beg me every uh, Saturday night to make him <laughs> pasta. <laughs> um, but I fell in love with the industry. Uh, mm -hmm. It wasn't necessarily because of a lack of uh, good food it was just it was a passion of mine mm -hmm. it still is and um, it's very creative yeah uh, especially in the world I'm in now uh, right. with the healthy food um, it's a lot of I can't have this or shouldn't have this and uh, and we find alternatives for everything so. for everything these days yeah. there's like flour from like coconut from almonds like there's everything of everything yeah I'm guessing life of your clients like if I got a portion of food like I feel like their life is so much easier because they don't need to think about it you know right. like they just go to the fridge it's all portioned out it's all with the perfect amount like it seems exactly. life seems so easy like that it's uh it's much easier yeah uh, i wish i had that yeah you I, have to hire like, you know for yourself yeah <laughs> a mini sarah black charm and judy yeah 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 um but it's 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 really great and it's very comforting also like we have our minds tricking us um 
and a lot of our clients uh, who are in it, some of them are in it for weight loss. Yeah, uh, I could from, imagine. For health yeah. reasons and, and whatever it is, or, or diabetes, right. or, you know. Um, and and I've, I've learned to tell them on, on the initial Zoom call, you know, like, we encourage feedback. We encourage feedback all the time on the quality, mm -hmm. on the quantity, yeah. but... Um, it's also, it gives an inspiration because we don't feed our clients all of the meals of the week. It's, it's not cheap. Right. Um, also, not only is it not cheap, also it's hard to keep food for that long. Right. And it does get overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So if I had a client that said, feed me all of the meals of the week, I would say no. <laughs> okay. Um, because it's, it just, it gets so overwhelming to see yeah. our food and it's like, right. it gets, it gets exhausting. So what's like the average way. of like how much you would recommend or the average that they order at a time? So we have clients that stick with the five lunches and five dinners. And that's mm. like, like the largest, um, we have also the middle, which is also a good middle. Mm -hmm. um, it's like four dinners a week okay. or two lunches and three dinners, something like that. And yeah. it's, uh, it works well. Right. Um, it also, again, depends on the budget. Right. But what I was going to say that uh, this is what I tell the clients, when you see the portions, it may look to you like it's not enough. Mm. Because we eat with our eyes, mm -hmm. but our minds trick us. And when we know that this was portioned for us, yeah, especially for us, according to what we need and what we like to eat. Mm -hmm. And a lot of our clients got it and they were like, oh my God, I'm, I'm full. I'm happy. So like, so how does this work? I would never yeah. portion to myself that small amount yeah i'm guessing and you know it's the not right a amount. small amount amount yeah. it's just balanced right it's balanced properly so yeah i'm guessing you're cal you can calculate the amount from like how much they weigh and how much they want to lose or what they want right Is yeah. That how you yeah yeah and it's uh it's according to fats uh protein vegetables right i remember you told me that ideally it's like if you have a plate half of it is veg and then a quarter of it is carbs and then protein. Right. Right? Right. Right. Yeah. So it seems really seems really balanced out. It's interesting, you know, I was speaking with an intuitive eater, mm -hmm. um, eating coach actually, Hannah Gantz, a few weeks ago, and she was telling me how her theory is that she doesn't measure food, she doesn't think about it too much, she just eats whatever she, she feels and she's intuitive about it. And then I was really thinking about it, like I don't I don't think that style is a style for me because if I do that I could just go on oh I really want this cake and like I really just want this here and there and then it just seems to me like one big blob but the people that I personally know who really manage to lose the most weight and really get on top of their weights are people that exactly eat exact amounts and they eat them at exact times right would you say that that's true also with your clients I would say it's it's true with our clients but it um, most of our clients are not in it for weight loss. So interesting. Uh, only. Yeah. Um, but we do have some clients that are in it for weight loss. Mm -hmm. And this, the, the consistency mm -hmm. of the meals and their food journaling. We mm -hmm. have the fruit, food, oh, journaling food journaling on, on the WhatsApp group helps. Wow. And our recommendation is don't weigh yourself every day. Weigh yourself once a week or at the most twice a week. Don't weigh yourself after Shabbat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and just don't give up. Yeah. Uh, you have the right guidance and, and you know, uh, you forgive yourself for uh, accidents happen. Yeah. And uh, just get the right guidance yeah um not every program works for everyone you know i've heard a for lot sure. of of a lot of different weight loss programs some right. of them are very strict mm -hmm. um we don't have that approach we have a very holistic approach um it's just it's very individual yeah i think it's so beautiful like, the service that you're doing for people and 
making so many families' lives easier. And, and I love it that you love doing what you do. Yeah. I wanted to ask you, so what if someone wanted to try food prepping for themselves at home? I used to do food prepping for a while and when I was single, and it made my life a whole lot easier. But something that I always struggled with is storing the food in a way that it doesn't go bad. Because right. there's nothing worse than the feeling of like, yes, I prepped all my food, but now I'm going to the fridge and like, it's not as fresh as I would like it to be. You know, it's been in the fridge for like four or five days. How would right. you go about it? So what, which type of food are you talking about? Let's say I made myself like rice, um, a stir fry with maybe coconut, um, coconut cream, zucchini, and maybe like a salad. Like salads, I would always leave out the salad dressing so it doesn't get right. soggy. But like, what, what was the others? How, what's the maximum amount of time that you would leave foods before, like, you know? How do you do it? Five days. Five days? Yeah. Unless you want to freeze it, which is something else. Right. Uh, not everything is freezable friendly. Yeah, like salads you can't freeze. Like salads, right. Yeah. Uh, but soups are very freezable friendly. Mm. Um, things like, like beans and legumes and chili, things like that are very very freezable friendly yeah um but salads even less than five days right yeah salad uh, I, I think like it for me a day you yeah. know salad because yeah. the vegetable also the second you, you cut a vegetable it starts oxidizing right so it loses its nutritional benefit correct so yeah we also make juices and we do recommend consuming them yeah on the same day wow um and you know, smoothies are good to be frozen. So mm -hmm. take it out an hour or two before you're ready to have mm -hmm. it and enjoy it whenever. Wow. Um, so, yeah, I would say, you know, with food prep, I would go in a different direction. Mm -hmm. um, there are busy, busy people out there. Um, what I would do is not prepare all the food to be done in one day mm -hmm. but prepare the mise en place like the preparing right of it like cut up the, all the onions and all of the carrots yeah. and and store them in like a container and then right. when you're ready or or cook the cook the beans and then store it in a separate container in the refrigerator and then right. when you're ready to put together your salad right. or or your dish yeah you have everything just you know yeah you, you took care of yourself it's like yeah it's a nice feeling and it'll stay fresh and good. right you, you reminded me of like preparing for the cleaning man like cleaning yeah. up for the cleaning man you know yeah. so it's easier for him to do his job yeah. so it's so it's the same also with food like i guess when you separate when everything is separated then it's easier for it to, to keep in the fridge right like for example this week i made quinoa and I just put it in a container. And then when I made a salad, I took some of the quinoa with the salad. And then, you know, with my husband's lunch also, with some with the chicken. Like, it's like right. these foods that are very staple foods that you could just, like, pack into any other type of meal. Right, exactly. And then uh, you just, you, you put it together. Yeah. What's the benefit of weighing the meals? The benefit of weighing the meals, I'm not the nutritionist. <laughs> okay. Um... <laughs> uh, it's it's really it's according to it, it's just very specific yeah so we have one client who has uh, what is it called uh, some kind of uh, condition and he has to limit his amount of uh, protein that mm. he consumes so we have to weigh it. it can't be over 30 grams or Whoa. 40 grams mm -hmm. which is not a lot uh, for example, but also for for weight loss purposes. Yeah, uh, we have another client who has a thyroid issue and has a lot of other issues and and uh, she's on a keto diet and um, and it's a very modified keto diet um, also for for mental uh, reasons. Wow. So um, so we she, she actually needs a certain amount of protein so we have to weigh it wow. um, and that's it's just it's specific individual uh, weighing and not always do you need to do that right right I guess when people really do reach nutritional limitations then they need to yeah I'm guessing also the people that come to you have been through so much in life that they're like, that's it. I'm hiring this uh, health, health eating, health eat, this health eat. And I'm getting myself my, my life in control. 
you know like i feel like because like the average person especially in israel i feel is just like yeah you go you eat carry on with life like but it's rare for me it's rare that i see people who really put like so much focus on the details and the grams and how much yeah yeah but uh, i would just say what goes with color goes with taste yeah especially with fruits and vegetables and yeah. fresh produce um yeah. But it's a lifestyle. Yeah. It's a lifestyle. And if you decide to go into it, um, then we, we all have our little sins, but uh, but it just it needs a certain amount of commitment or a, a very good reason to go into it. And a very good reason is just, I want to live a better life. Yeah. Um, so that would be my recommendation. We're happy to help. Yeah, of course. What does this dream job look like for you on a daily basis? I have an amazing staff, and that starts with that. We are looking for a delivery person right now. Okay. Um, since the war broke out, we had someone, mm -hmm. but uh, we didn't really? have enough work, and mm. then he found another job, so mm. we uh, sent him love and mm. success. Okay. We are looking for a delivery person at this point um, but I have an amazing staff and amazing clients and we're learning from them and they're coming back coming back to Israel we're inspired by each and every one and we're learning from them and we're feeding them yeah so that's the best. when someone's well fed they're also happy right yeah right Absolutely. I see that on my kids. I see yeah. that on myself. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Yeah. It's like Rachel in the war, you know, she, yeah. she fed the terrorists and she saved her own life. Right. right. Yeah. So food is really powerful. And um, so how how can people find you? People could find me in a frat, uh, but on our website, uh, health-eat.com. And uh, my WhatsApp number is there. Yeah, all the information is there, both in English and in Hebrew. It's very clear, and we're happy to hear from everyone. Yeah, and what's one last, one last note you would end up, or something you can tell somebody who is wanting to get back into better nutrition and awareness with themselves, who, who isn't about, isn't right ready to come right away to hire someone, but wants within their own life to start implementing that service more? What can you tell them? Um, take care of yourself yeah. and see what works for you. Um, don't listen to anyone else. Just listen yeah. to your, your own to your intuition. self. Yes. Yeah. And if, if that's, if you feel like you're ready and you feel like you want to try it and see how you feel, that's, that's okay. It's just, you deserve yeah. to, to take care of yourself. Yeah, to be willing to take one step and just one step in the direction of health and healthy nutrition. Right, yeah. right. I love that. So when I, uh, we, we built a house a few years ago and we, and, and like, at first I was like, I want, I want everything to be perfect and I want everything to be detailed. And a friend of mine said, you know, you have your whole lives to, to design the house and to make changes, move into the house and then see what you want to do, what you could afford. Like, you know, mm -hmm. so I'm comparing it to, to our bodies. We have our whole lives to take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. But let's move in. <laughs> and get to know ourselves yes. better yeah, yeah. and see what we need and what we want and how we feel. Mm. So that's how I'm going to end it. <laughs> I like that. Everyone needs to move into their own house yeah. and then design it. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.